Today, the tenant and landlord's wicked problem. The DFA Daily for the 12th of April 2020. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to the latest post covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. In the past few days, one topic has hit my inbox more than most. It's the thorny question of who blinks first in the landlord-tenant world of residential rentals. On the tenant side, many have taken a considerable income drop thanks to the economic slowdown, often halved or worse, even after the various government support programmes are taken into account. And this is especially the case for those living in the high-rise world of our major cities, where rentals are large still in absolute terms. Some tenants have contacted their landlords, often via their agents, and after providing appropriate evidence of the real fall in income, some appear to have come to the party, but many are only offering a deferral of rent or making the suggestion of the tenant tapping into their superannuation to fund the rental payments. Then on the landlord's side, often someone with just one or two properties mortgaged to the hilt on the investment properties as well as mortgaged on their own place and also facing the same income cups and financial pressures. The last thing they can cope with is giving a rental holiday to their tenant. Now, some states are offering a level of support. For example, in Queensland, the government there unveiled a package of measures to implement the freeze on evictions. Deputy Prime Minister Jackie Trad is encouraging tenants, property owners and agents to work together to sustain tenancies through this public health emergency. We've all heard of stories of too many Queenslanders who are right now doing it tough. And the government recognises the hardship they're suffering. It's not in the interest of anyone to have tenants left without a place to go when we are fighting to prevent the spread of a deadly disease. We will not allow anyone to be evicted because they can't pay their rent as a result of this crisis. Housing and Public Works Minister Mick de Brenny said that Queenslanders would always rally to support each other when times were tough and that he was encouraged by the already high number of people resolving issues and supporting each other. Neither landlords nor tenants are to blame for this and now is the time for them to work together to get through this crisis, he said. The Queensland Government has launched an online rental hub to provide all of the information and resources to support discussions between property owners and renters. For those that can't reach an agreement, there will be a compulsory reconciliation for disputes between landlords and tenants through the Residential Tenants Authority. In asking tenants and property owners to find a solution that works for all parties, the RTA will have clear guidelines that prohibit a requirement to draw on superannuation or sell basic personal assets. De Brini said that the Queensland Government will implement the National Cabinet decision to freeze evictions due to rent arrears for Queensland tenants impacted by the health issue. We are providing certainty by implementing a retrospective freeze on evictions as from Sunday the 29th of March 2020. And new protections now mean that property owners will be prohibited from evicting a tenant if their lease expires during the public health crisis. This means that a property owner must offer an extension to the lease for at least a further six months. Alternatively, if a tenant cannot pay rent due to the impacts of the health crisis and wants to end their lease early, they will be allowed to do so. Tenants will be still required to demonstrate respect for their property and neighbours by maintaining their home in accordance with their tenancy agreement. And the Deputy Premier said that the Queensland Government had also introduced fail-safe methods to support tenants experiencing hardship and unable to access or waiting for other financial support will be there for Queensland tenants if all else fails. New eligibility criteria is now in place for rental grants of up to four weeks or a maximum of $2,000. This is a last resort for Queenslanders in need of support while they're waiting for federal government support to prevent homelessness. Now, as The Guardian wrote, 
despite the Prime Minister's declaration on the 29th of March that National Cabinet had agreed to a six-month moratorium on evictions, only Tasmania has passed legislation to enact these protections. It means that tenants in the private market who are unable to afford their rent are, according to tenants groups, at least at the mercy of individual landlords. The Prime Minister Scott Morrison has urged landlords and by implication the property managers who represent them to do the right thing, yet not all appear to be doing so. ASIC last week warned agents they face up to five years in jail if they ask tenants to withdraw super in order to pay the rent. Tenants Victoria's advice line, now an email service during the health crisis, is receiving dozens of messages a day from renters worried about losing their home. Among the record of complaints is correspondence from a single mother who said that she was threatened with eviction after losing her job. Initially, they demanded full rent regardless and threatened eviction, she said. With the eviction moratorium in place, they're now offering a $10 a week rent reduction for six months. This is not sustainable, especially given how difficult it is to access Centrelink at this time. I have no savings, no family, no support. A separate letter to a tenant from an agent in Melbourne's north states, do not ask for a rent reduction or a rent freeze as we will not put these requests forward. Saving for that rainy day? you may need to dip into your savings. Another to a tenant who is in rental arrears provided some unsolicited budgeting advice. I hope that you're also doing your part by cancelling unnecessary subscriptions such as Spotify, Foxtel or Netflix or any other service that is not considered necessary at this time. Initially, they demanded full rent regardless and threatened eviction. The industry has condemned unusual and heavy-handed tactics, including the reference to superannuation that drew ASIC's attention and has broadly warned against tarring all property managed with the same brush. But it is clear that the lack of legislative certainty is having an impact. In a letter to landlords, one real estate agent said that they should give struggling tenants a rent rebate or food shopping voucher instead of a rent discount or forgiving rent payments, saying Giving a discount or forgiving rent payments will void your landlord insurance, despite the fact that insurance sources say this is incorrect. Australian agents are running without any real guidance from government except keeping tenants in place. We are looking forward to some guidance, the agent said. If the real estate industry and tenants groups agree on one thing, it is that the lack of action at National Cabinet on residential tenants has been damaging. Last month, Morrison had insisted there is a lot of work being done together to try and get a consistent approach. When it comes to residential tenancies, the states and territories had worked towards a plan of incentivization for landlords to offer rent reductions by offering them cuts or waivers of land tax. But progress stalled as states differed on the extent to which landlords should wear the losses from rent reductions, the duration of land tax reductions and practical difficulties for states where land tax is levied predominantly by local councils. The announcement of the $130 billion JobKeeper wage subsidy program helped take the heat out of demand for support. This week, the National Cabinet agreed to a mandatory code of conduct to negotiate commercial rent reductions, but gave up on achieving national consistency on residential rents. Morrison declared residential tenancies were now a matter for each state and territory and there will be no baseline beyond the moratorium on evictions. Only the ACT has announced its own scheme to offer rent reductions of up to $200 a week funded through land tax reductions for landlords and states now say announcements will be made in due course, leaving open the prospect that renters in some parts of the country will get shorter three-month rent reductions. The Real Estate Institute of New South Wales says the absence of clear advice from government, aside from the need to work it out between themselves, has led tenants to believe they do not need to pay their rent. The Real Estate New South Wales president acknowledges that there are tenants for whom rent relief will be necessary should they lose their jobs or have their work scaled back. Equally, there are landlords, typically mum and dad investors, who depend on the rental income to repay loans or fund their living expenses in retirement. 
The plan of transferring the financial burden being experienced by the tenant to the landlord is utterly unjust. And Dr. Heather Holst, Victoria's Residential Tenancies Commissioner, said the states need to implement a retrospective evictions moratorium as soon as possible. There is a bit of a wait and see attitude which is hard for tenants who know that they are spending every last cent of their savings and just wondering if they're going to be able to stay or not. Holst notes too that the boosted welfare payments and the JobKeeper wage subsidy do not begin until late April and May respectively. The financial clock is ticking, Holst said. Something needs to be done very quickly. And Holst acknowledges that the lack of policy certainty has also created confusion for landlords who are also facing the prospect of a battle with their insurer. Landlords would like to claim unpaid rent under their insurance, but cannot because the insurance policies require landlords to issue an eviction notice before they can be compensated for lost rent. Nor are landlords covered for any reduction in rents they agree with tenants. Obviously, that's just not going to work in the current circumstances, Hulse said. The real estate and insurance industries are at war over who will bear the cost of unpaid rent, which industry sources estimate could be as much as $10 billion. Insurance companies fear the states and territories may change the law to allow landlords to claim without issuing an eviction notice. The state governments are designing the schemes and are really surprised that insurers won't come to the party, an industry source said. Why should insurers bend over? One large Victorian real estate agency has asked tenants to lobby their local MP to change the law to allow claims for unpaid rent without issue and eviction notice. As the stoush escalated on Thursday, EBM Rent Cover, which insures about 160,000 properties, announced it would not be taking on any new business, including from existing customers, after next Tuesday, and blamed a lack of information and guidance from the federal government. Some insurers are considering quitting the Australian market entirely, an industry source said. An Insurance Council of Australia spokesman said the industry supports measures to assist landlords and tenants negotiate outcomes that can help them through the current crisis. Now, my point is that neither tenant or landlord are responsible for this mess, so there does need to be substantial government action. After all, if they can bail out corporations and banks to the tune of billions of dollars, it seems only right to address this critical issue. And of course, it is made worse by the growth of renting due to housing affordability. About a one-third of households are renting, as the proportion of households who own their property outright have fallen to a new low, according to our surveys. The expansion of the rental sector and the financial incentives for investors have been bad public policy for a long time, and it will likely come home to roost in the current crisis. So I think the case for more coherent government action and intervention is obvious and urgent. And it's worth reflecting, I think, that the residential rental sector is just part of the broader property Ponzi scheme, which we've been talking about for some time and which has been driven by banks and governments, both federal and state, for many years. Unfortunately, we are now starting to see the cracks appearing and I suspect we will see more ahead. And before I go, first a quick thank you to our subscribers as we've just reached over 36,000 now on our YouTube channel in the last few days. I really appreciate your ongoing support for our efforts. And finally, I want to wish you and yours the best over the holiday period, whatever religious festivals are most relevant to you. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.